Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. And I'm up on the station, and that's because I got the train parked here. Yes, they uh, got the airblades up and running again. That's why there hasn't been any videos lately, is because I kind of got grounded because my train was grounded, you could say. Uh, but one thing I've noticed is I'm not sliding on the platform here anymore. Uh, when I first landed the train here, it was actually technically last night for me, but I loaded the save file up. It was still at night, and I was on the platform and I was sliding like normal so I went into the stasis chamber slept till the morning and I came back out here and noticed I wasn't sliding anymore so I posted it up in the forum there uh, uh, the developers actually did get the save file and they pointed out that the sliding thing it doesn't actually show up in the new unity and apparently we could be seeing a transition to the new unity in the next month or two which could be really good um, I'm hope thinking that having the better code might actually be able to have things like that work a little bit better but that's just wheels thank god i don't have suspensions on that thing in that that over there or that'd be a problem but i have this all planted for now just to keep things out of the way i did do a bit of a mining run i uh went and grabbed some xanite aluminum or not aluminum uh silver and cobalt because that's what we needed we got a lot of aluminum uh, the gold and the titanium, well, the only thing I'm really going to need them for that I can tell is going to be, uh, it's probably going to be the big wheels, which I think use, no, actually it's just the large air blades and the water pumps. We need those super mechanical alloy parts or whatever they are, those things there. But other than that, we don't really need too much else, but I do have this stuff here. So I'm going to go ahead and unload this, and then we're going to go do some some more work with hover pads these things are absolutely amazing oh this is going to be scary i better stand out of the way on this because i had this uh up in the mountains oh okay i'm safe i thought i was going to take off because usually uh, when you power it off it'll reset to its current altitude so what do i have over there nothing all right, well, I'm going to bring all these containers back out, and then I'll do a little bit of time-lapse while I do this. So, let's do this. Alright, I'm done. That didn't actually take me too long. I think it took me about 10 minutes altogether to do that. So, uh, that is all connected. Uh, I don't really know how much I have in everything. Let's go ahead and check this out. And this is good thing about build vision. I don't have to actually open up to see how many stacks. So I've got 35 stacks of aluminum. I've got 22 stacks of silver, which is actually pretty good. Uh, 38 of xanite. There's little odds and ends that showed up in there, unfortunately. Uh, I did have some trouble with a couple of the containers, as you saw. The 
It's one thing I don't like about the stabilization is you get too much bobbing like you're on water, right? And we still have some biomass, so we're okay on that front. I'm going to turn this off. What I do want to check, though, is just see how much fuel I have left in the train. That's actually going to be one of the projects we're going to be doing soon. Uh, not this episode. I got uh, some fun things I want to do, but I want to see how much power this thing has. Uh, first, let's check the loader. So I've got eight hours, so this is actually really good. It's a train I'm worried about, because I think I'm down to like 45 minutes. Oh, don't kill me, don't kill me. Let's actually get in there, because I don't have the weight. That's why I jumped up like that. Oh, come on, let me in. I'm gonna slow it back down, make sure it's all sitting on the platform. All right. Now let's see how much power we have. Hour 42, hour 41, hour 41, I uh, just want to make sure that they're all sort of running evenly, hour 53, that's actually not too bad, I thought I used this more than I have, but anyways, uh, what I want to do is, I'm sure you already know from the title, is I want to do some more work with hover pads, uh, I've been try to think of ways we can use them just because of how they work and one of the things I've been wanting to do is sort of like uh, something like a roller coaster uh, something that would be perpetual motion that you don't need a motor or anything uh, I'm gonna change this by the way uh, I've just haven't decided what to do with it plus t changing that takes like 15 20 minutes and whatnot but now uh, it's just the way they work uh, the hover pads are basically repelling mag magnets like uh, they can be used for not only pushing objects but they can be used as springs as well uh, they've been used as motors as we've seen in so many different cases like this is classic spring example you turn that on and it pushes up and then over here we have the same thing with the motor where it's constantly if I turn this on, it'll turn this way, but at the same time, you have a spring, and that causes it to push back. So you could have two hover pads facing each other on a hinge, and you turn them on, and it would basically allow you to open up like 45 degrees or 30 degrees, depending on how far you have them. How far you have them apart, uh, or away from the, the hinge anyways, and I think, I think they only push about, about three blocks, right? One, two, three maybe three and a half so that's always stuff to use uh, we can also we'll also check to see if if it's just three and a half in between or if the three and a half and the three and a half makes seven we'll actually test that out so what I'm gonna do is I was planning on doing a modular base system somewhere over to the where was it here was somewhere over here, I think there was a spot over there, a fl flat area I was going to go and start doing some work on. Actually, we could probably start doing it right back here since the train's out of the way. Uh, let me get some stuff together and then uh, we'll go back to our old friend, the hover pad. Okay, I have everything ready to go. Uh, sadly, my inventory just isn't big enough when I want to do one of these little project runs. Thank God I got my little flyer here. Uh, I was actually thinking about, I do have that extra port there. I've been thinking about having like a little little uh, connection point to a, a flyer so I have a little place to dock and I can just go ahead and um, you know park right next to the connector so I can put stuff in the trunk without having to run back and forth in and out all the time but I want to do a little bit of a test here and yes it has been choppy for me lately I don't know why but I want to see what happens when we go at a loading range on this thing and then go back in because I know it would freak out uh, when it was parked on the ground but now that it's actually on a foundation it seems to be doing a lot better so now it unloads and wow the frame rate's so much better who would have thought huh now where was that area I was looking at there was an area I had I think it was I think it might have been to the south oh there it is now I see the trebuchet. Let's see what happens when the station loads with the train on it. I want to see if it's going to freak out. 
go for a <laughs> close flyby. Yeah, I was actually gonna use uh, deuterium generation for a little project or uranium, but for some reason I can't find the five stacks of rods that I had. Well, that's okay because I got some deuterium. And yeah, I just realized we weren't actually flying anywhere. We we're gonna go into the backyard since I have the space. I did label that stasis chamber too. So in case I ever wanna just happen to respawn back here, I have that. With that being said, let's drop her down. All right, and got the power. Not that it matters because it's I think solar baby. Okay, so. Yeah, maybe we'll have some fun with those guys. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm going to make a big generator out here. Uh, I do want to make sure I have enough power for these hover pads because, unfortunately, they are still a little on the pricey side. Now, for the way this is going to work is... I probably should have moved that. It's the way the, the hover pads are actually working. And what I'm going to do is, after I set up my little power plant here... I'm gonna show you exactly what what the mechanic is that I'm gonna be using to my advantage, I guess. Let's actually make this a different color. This is power, let's make it red. Okay, and then let's throw a generator down. Why not? I should have everything on me. Okay. So, uh, let's see the best way to explain this. Let's, I don't have fabrics for that. Actually, I think we might be able to pull this off. Let's try something here. So we're going to start with uh, a block. Let's actually make this yellow. Why not? So I'm going to collect this. Um, how was it again? No, no, no. Because it's good. In order to get the hover pads to create this motion, they have to be on a 45 degree angle. I think I've shown this before. Uh, if I take a hover pad, which is on number one here, no, it's not going to actually fit there. i got to throw another block in. Let's put it up here. So if I drop this down to the ground, it's going to be laying flat this way, or it would if it was balanced properly. Let's get a little skid on the back end here. Uh, three. Yes. And so what we're basically doing is we're making essentially a tractor, we'll call it. And uh, we'll throw a switchboard on it, which is here. Let's let's put it there. Why not? Uh, I'm gonna put a little container on the generator, and then we'll I'll just put the fuel in there, and it can take it when it needs it. There we go. in there and you are connected good actually that's not what I want I want this one connect that to there and there yes so right now it's set to hover so when you get in the cockpit that's when it or set to ground so when you get to the cockpit it will lift up if we set it to automatically to hover even though it I think it should be saying that it's set to ground it already, or set to hover already, but anyways. Now if I drop this down, it should take off on its own. So let's take this one out here. Okay, maybe it didn't. Let's actually redo this one. Hang on. Uh, let me rebuild this, and I think I'm going to put two more here, and I'll give you a better example. Okay, here we are. And I just uh, had to pass away the night because it was dark. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect this to there, there, and there, and then back over to here. And so then we're going to send, again, we're going to set all three of these to hover. So what's going to happen is when it drops down, it's going to be on a 45 degree angle, and it's going to take off on its own until it runs out of power. That's the plan anyways. And there she goes. The galloping thingamabobber, and then it runs out of power. 
So that's how the hover pads are working. And what's going on is you could think of um, pool billiards, where the it's basically the angle of the force is the angle it's going to go. So on a 45 degree angle, it's going to get it going. You know what I mean? Anyways, so what I want to do with this, I want to try to see if I could use it to redesign the marble maze. Now the problem with doing it that way is I won't be able to, uh, the way I plan on doing it, it's going to have to be, let's call it off grid, or not off grid, 45 to the grid. And in order for this to work, as soon as you auto save, goes by. Uh, got to get a little hole in the ground here so I can place this down where I want it to. Okay. Now I got to build this in a diamond because I'm going to be working 45 to the actual grid itself. And that's where things are going to get interesting. Uh, let me sleep this right away. Okay, that's better. But uh, yeah, so I was thinking, the, like, really thinking about this, and it's the cent what we're basically going to be doing. And I'm gonna uh, change the color of the hover pads to uh, let's get them white. I never use white, so it's going to be like that, where the hover pads are going to be facing. There's going to be one there. There will have to be a gap between it. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out which blocks I need here. Okay, that's one, two. So I need t a two block gap, basically. And then that, and it should be there. I'll get the other hover pad on, like so. But now we have them both facing this direction. So anything that goes through here should get pushed this direction. Now, I'm going to get a few more of these set up and get a good enough space, and we're going to try pushing a ball through here and see what happens. All right, here we go. So, again, I have all ten of these set to hover mode. I have a ball here set up, or a little, uh, little test dummy here. I might have to start naming these things. So let's see what happens when we push it through. As you can see, the balls they have, they're not entirely round, but let's see what happens. It's actually... Let's do this the easy way. Let's put a hover pad here. I was actually thinking about doing that. Uh, let's see here. Why push the ball when you get a hover pad to do it for you? Now, I'm hoping this will work. Oh, yeah, I gotta set the hover mode. Alright, that's not gonna work just because it, it's on an angle. So I gotta push it myself then. Yeah, interesting. So it does work. Now, the next thing I want to try, uh, I probably should have put these up a little higher, but it might work because I want to see about getting it railed down. Uh, the problem with using this is I won't be able to use a rail just because of the fact of, that we're on an angle. And I was thinking about trying to use these somehow because. Uh, actually, it'd probably be the small ones would be better. Just because these are actually on an angle. But how I would use it to line up with the grid would probably be like that. So we could have like a channel like this. On that side, and then have the other one on this side. And then we can have the ball going up and then try to find a way to work it up using other transitions now how would we get this one to go up that's the question that'll be an interesting one to figure out maybe maybe just even having the, the slopes like going like this 45 or even the shallower ones uh, like I have here might be a little bit better for like a 
better transition upwards if we're going to go upwards. But let's go ahead and take this out. Let's put a ramp at the end. I'm going to extend this a little bit. See if we get a little more speed. Throw a ramp out the at, at the end and see if we can get any distance on this or even take out one of those trees. Okay, so we added a whole bunch more, which is like small, small drop in the bucket for me. Well, let's go ahead and get another ball set up. I was actually thinking of trying. I'm just thinking of a little idea I might be able to come up with for uh, uh, a ball loading system. Actually, you know what? This might actually be something interesting to try. Because I was actually thinking about, you know, using the hover pad to my advantage to be able to pick up a ball. Uh, let me see if I can throw some together and I'll see what we come up with. Alright, I got a little thing here set up. I'm just uh, wired all together. It's going to have three solar panels and more than enough batteries. Uh, that's just because air blades are 100, the hover pad is 150, and the solar panels are only 250 a piece. So I had to throw a, another solar panel on there. Not that we need it, but at least we're not throwing fuel into this thing all the time. Uh, just got a few more batteries to hook up, configure the pads. So what this is going to be, uh, it's going to be a little top heavy, so I don't know how this thing is going to land. But it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this hover pad set up to grounded mode. So only when you're in the, the cockpit does it actually engage the hover mode. Now it's going to be pushing, so when I drop down the ball and when I'm in the cockpit, it's going to automatically push the ball into this pocket. At least that's a, a plan. And then to drop the ball, I just get out of the cockpit. The air blades will still hover, but this will lose its hover or its uh, push and the ball should just drop down. And that's a theory anyways. So we'll go ahead and we'll set that and that stays on grounded. And then we got to get our directional setup on this. So like that. Oh, I don't like that. That's switching. Uh, turning connections off might actually help. But I keep forgetting to do that. Okay. So then directional. Directional and then... Uh, I'll just worry about steering on the front. Okay, so let's, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Uh, I have no idea what is going to happen, but... It wants to fly, and the reason why it's doing that is because I built it higher up off the ground, so it's going to try to adjust to its current altitude, but the extra weight is causing it to sink down. And that's what happened with the train when I went to go check the power on it. All right, I was hoping it was going to be a little more front heavy. Let's uh, see if we can weigh this down a little bit. Uh, let's get a few more batteries on. Why not? Can I ever have enough batteries? Probably should put them out here. There we go. So then that way the ball is actually going to roll out. Maybe. Let's get rid of these three. And we'll stick them down here. And that way it's got a little bit of a nose down. Am I really out of parts? Um, hmm. Is there something around here I can snag? Actually, I think I have circuits over here. Let me get out of there. Let's check this out. I don't know if it's something that's been changed too. I noticed my jetpack fills up like almost instantaneously. I know they've been uh, making a few adjustments. I do not have any circuits here. Uh, give me a moment. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Had a little bit of a mishap here when I was taking the old one apart. Uh, now, I shouldn't have to worry about the hover pad actually pushing me when I go to pick up the ball because of the fact that the ground is going to be 90 degrees to it. So we'll go ahead and finish those up, and I'll well connect those up to the battery while we're, uh, the power supply while we're at it. Uh, that is going to be a tricky one to get to. Okay, let's connect these. It's not like we need it. This is just for weight balancing. Let's uh, see what kind of view I get. Perfect. That's why we go in third person. All right, so let's go see if we can pick up this ball. 
See what happens. Now, in theory, yeah, if I can get to the right spot, it picks up the ball. And there we have it. I am carrying a ball. So, if, if I was a more careful driver, that wouldn't happen. But I was going to say, if I get out of the cockpit, it should just drop the ball. This is uh, an idea I've been thinking about trying to do for a while. It's actually somebody, oh, geez, last year somebody had had suggested it, trying to find a way to pick up the balls. Well, here we have it. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world, but it works. You see that? It just pops right in there. And then uh, if I go over here carefully... I might have to fine tune this just a little bit so that when the hover pad is pushing the ball, uh, it's not so front heavy. I'm gonna actually see if I get straight in the firing range. Just because I have a little ramp set up there, actually I have it all turned off. Why am I getting so much drift? Oh my god, this thing is terrible. I wonder if the hover pad is causing this. That would be an interesting mechanic, being able to use the hover pad to actually steer your craft. Alright, so now, if... Let's try to get out here. If I hop out, the hover pad disengages and the ball drops. So now, let's go and uh, turn this back on and launch it, see what happens. See what happens at the end there. Uh, it's like Velcro. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to run up. I know the other ramps, like the actual ramps that they used on the roof there, will work better with the with the, the balls and the blocks. The problem is though is I'm trying to go 45 to the, to the grid here so I might have to find a way to use the longer slopes to do something like that but that's something else I was going to end up trying with this because now that I got this set up I'm, I don't know if I'm going to have enough room for it I might have to move this out a little bit but I wanted to see how it's going to work with uh, just a simple little unpowered craft just a cockpit and four wheels on wheel bearings and see how that goes but uh, it's getting dark, so I'm going to have to skip the night away. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go grab my ball wherever it went. Well, that one's over there, but I've got this red one over here, too. But, yeah, uh, I'll bring it back when it's daytime. Okay, i got something set up here. So I uh, opened it up a little bit wider. It's actually a four-block gap. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of make like a little bit of a bobsled. I actually forgot to pick up fabrics, so give me one moment. Okay. Okay, I got fabrics on me now. Uh, one thing I do, I do is get uh, some rotors on my bar. Uh, I was actually just thinking about this now. I don't know if this is going to be wide enough. Because I need the rotor and the block and the wheel. Uh, so I actually need a five block gap. And I got four and a half, I think. Uh, let's actually do a quick count. I might have to move this side again. Uh, let's see here. So one... I won't even count that because it technically starts there. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, I might have to. Because we got the wheel, a rotor, a block, a rotor, and another wheel. Like I said, another one got blocked up. So, let's get this all taken out. Now we can, I got the fabrics and I got everything I need, so let's go ahead and build our uh, little test mobile. And this is going to be interesting because I have to build this off grid now. So, uh, let me get my handy dandy post, our, our planting stick. Yeah, I don't need the switchboard anymore. And this way I can actually do it this way. That center, yeah, close enough. This just saves me from having to try to move the thing. 
And then of course we'll put another one like so, and we'll just build right off of that. Okay. So now we do, let's see, do small block. Okay, and then throw a couple of rotors on the side of this. I call them rotors, even though they're rotating plates, but you can call them a lazy Susan if you really want, but uh, I don't think Susan likes to be called lazies. Okay, now why are you not grabbing? Come on. No. Oh. Okay, there we go. Didn't want to snap for some reason. Okay. And then we go a couple more blocks. I just want to make sure it doesn't touch the cockpit. That should be fine. One, two, three. And then another two. Put these. So now, what I'm wondering, and this is why I'm actually doing this, is to see if the hover pads are actually going to push off of the wheels or if they're only pushing off of actual blocks. And I don't know if they'll actually be able to reach the frame or the cockpit itself. So, this is going to be an interesting test to, uh, to do. And I am going to put a cockpit in it because, of course, if, if I'm building a roller coaster, I want to be able to ride it. Now we get the old glass one here. Even though I think it's actually heavier than the other ones, but I don't think it really matters. All right. All right let's finish her up. Take our little, our little buggy for a spin here. Just got to get in here I really should be doing this black and yellow because this is technically a test vehicle okay is that all done yes it is drop you down to the ground I'm gonna put put something here so it doesn't go anywhere um, 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 um. again I'm building on an angle so yeah, and the game's gonna wanna not cooperate too well. That's no, just in case it rolls back. Okay, well, it is uh, getting dark, so I'm gonna pass the night away and I'll bring you back in the morning. And morning has come. All right, so let's uh, turn this thing on and see what happens. Oh yeah, I gotta turn it over here. Uh, this is gonna be a disaster, I know it. I wonder if it's... Yeah. At least should be okay. My famous last words. In fact, what I should, should have done is I should have put a hover pad on here. Uh, give it a bit of a push, but... So what are you gonna do? What are you going to do? No, it didn't go flying, but it does prove a point that they do push off the wheels. So I can sort of use this as, you know, we could probably use it as like an automated system. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering now is like how it's going to work for the carrying of weight. Like if we go up a hill using these to push up and I go down the hill, am I going to be able to go up 75% of the same hill I went down, like in real life, or it's just going to be one of those things where as soon as I start hitting something, I just stop. I'm not too sure. I've also been thinking about possibly having, you know, if you got a vehicle going up a ramp, this is clearly too high of a ramp, but even like a a longer slope, having a hover pad facing upwards, so as the vehicle goes up on a 45 degree angle, that it gets carried up with the hover pad, but I have t tried this and it seems to push it away. So that's something that's interesting. Now, or since we have that thing there, the ball's over there, let's, let's go throw the ball back in there and see what happens. See if uh, we can hit that little flyer I got there. I did grab the red one. I, that's right. Okay, let's hop in. We go back into third person. 
and we go from here. Yeah, I tell you, there's just so many things you can do with these hover pads. And this is actually something I had thought about for a while. I didn't thought about trying to use it like, uh, you know, possibly like a, a locking catch system. So, sort of like how uh, train cars, when they couple, you push them in and they just lock together and you got to pull a bar. Or in this case, you just, just hit a switch and it goes out or it uh, disengages. Not the easiest thing in the world, but you know what? Trying to pick this thing up like that is a lot easier than trying to rebuild these things. Well, don't need to be going anywhere. Could have that upper pad in a little bit more. But, you know, I don't want to take the chance that I can't actually get the ball in there. kind of weird how it's flying like this. I wonder what it's got to do with that hover pad being there. Maybe the hover pad is sort of reacting on the ball somehow. Actually, I think I know what it is. And I'm going to land this to do it. I think it's because I just have the front steering. Maybe I'm going to set it to the back as well. And I'm landing it because as soon as I get out, that ball's going to drop. Uh, okay, let's get out of here so we can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, that's what I want. Let's see. Build vision so I can actually see what I'm doing here. So this one uh, goes that way. This one goes that way. Okay. Get that off. I actually like that they can have build vision on while you're in the cockpit. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I guess because the way the center of the mass center of mass is right now, it just wants to go in funny directions. I was gonna have just the slopes on there, but I, I didn't know how well it was gonna hold. Just because we're holding a two block two block wide object in a three block wide gap. So now when I hop out, it should drop. There we go. And of course, it didn't really go anywhere. Uh, let's go try this one more last little time. Yeah. So as you can see, it barely touches it. So that proved the point that it was pushing off those wheels, or at least those rotors. Eh, that was worth a shot. But anyways, yeah, uh, it's been a while since we tested with hover pads, and I thought we'd try a few things. Uh, one of the things I'm glad about is this, this ball loader. I actually like this thing. I might have, like I said, I might have to maybe move the hover pad a little bit or maybe even maybe even try to bring that pocket in a little bit more. I remember when they first came out, they had hover height adjustments just like the wheels had speed settings. But anyways... Now I'll take, go pick this up so I can get a, a nice screenshot for Steam and maybe even a nice thumbnail going. And go from there. The bobbing is... Actually, that would be something that would be nice to have. An adjustment on the actual stabilization. Being able to adjust how s sensitive it is. Come on. Give me that. Now, if I was smart, I would put two hover pads on here. Really? Come on. See, you gotta be in that certain spot. Oh. oh good thing it's on air blades. Yeah, I always try to do things the hard way. But anyways, I want to call this episode here. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.